Many times I am brought a colt to train that is somewhat pushy when it comes to being handled and leading, as well as just ground manners in general. The horse will commonly push into you or step on you while you are leading him and will run right past you when you are leading him through a gate or any other narrow area. This rudeness in the horse is created by a lack of respect for the human and is usually the result of too much coddling and petting and handling without ever being shown a required expectation in regards to his placement and position while next to you. In nature, horses are always aware of their own body position in relation to the body position of other horses in the herd. This is especially true at water and at good feed, for at such a time you will clearly see the leaders of the band dominate their area by aiming their hips, pinning their ears, or even lunging forward with teeth bared at any lesser horse who might dare attempt to drink or eat in their area. After a long enough course of time, a pecking order is established and the alpha horses have an expected requirement that is obeyed by the rest of the herd, not only at special grazing areas and water holes, but even in general day-to-day -day travel and movements. The problem for many horse owners is that their horse might very well be establishing himself as alpha rather than the owner through all sorts of cues and body language, but because the owner does not understand the horse's language, he doesn't even know it is happening and doesn't think anything of it, at least not until he is stepped on, bitten, or kicked. This simple exercise I'm about to show you will go a long way towards putting some ground manners on a pushy horse. And even better, will keep a horse from ever learning to be pushy in the first place. This horse was never dangerous by any means, but she was very pushy and wanted to run past you all the time while you were leading or putting on a blanket or even just going into her stall to check waters and clean. The gate was her worst area when it came to leading. All I want to do here is make it clear to the horse that as I lead, she is never to go further than having the point of her nose parallel to the point of my shoulder. In order to teach this, I will simply lead her forward a few steps and abruptly stop. I'll make my own body cues very clear to the horse at this stage by leaning forward a little while I'm walking forward and by being abrupt and standing very erect when I stop. Keep the lead rope slack, both while you are walking and when you are stopping. We want the horse to learn to pay attention to us and our body cues, not just to learn to be dragged around with a rope. If and when the horse does not stop when I stop, or if the horse walks at a faster pace than me and gets her nose beyond my shoulder, I will rather abruptly but not violently, as that will likely create problems rather than solve them. Take the slack out of the lead rope and pull on her halter and back her up. She will probably still not back up or will be very sluggish about it, so I will use the tail end of the lead rope as a quirt on her chest to create some backward momentum and back her up several steps. I will do this every single time her nose passes my shoulder. The only exception being if I put my hand out so she can pass me, if we are going through a narrow area, or if I do want to close a gate behind me. But even then, I want her to walk past me following my hand and follow my hand around and bring her nose back to that area behind my shoulder. After a while, I will begin to have her also back up on a loose lead rope whenever I back up. And I will pull on her with the lead rope less and less, going straight to using my body position and the lead rope as a quirt on her chest, rather than making her dull in the face by me pulling on that lead rope. The horse must learn to read my body rather than learn to be pulled on all the time. Going through the gate, I will make sure that the horse learns to patiently be led rather than frantically rush past me. I will do the same thing here at the gate.
that we have already been doing, lead a few steps, stop, back up, and wait, and be petted. If I know that the horse has anxiety problems like this while walking through a gate, I'll make sure that for a month or so, we make it a habit never to just walk through a gate, but to mix it up by walking part way in, then stopping, backing out again the way you came, being petted at a standstill in the middle of the gate. Horses are creatures of habit, always looking for the next step. So sometimes a horse that rushes at the gate is not really even trying to be rude and is not really even scared necessarily. He just wants to do what he knows is coming next. Well then, if we make being backed up or stopped and petted in the middle of the gateway a habit, then he will think that what is coming next is simply to relax and take a deep breath. So he will have no reason to try to rush past you. By the way, the same is true for horses that won't stand still while you get in the saddle or while you dismount. In good ground manners, Leading your horse is not about being mean or rough. It is simply about being consistent and having a clear requirement for where your horse is to walk. Being strict about where your horse walks goes a long way towards making him a good horse in general. Even this horse you're watching was extremely jittery all the time when she first got here. She didn't even eat her feed consistently in her own stall. But by giving your horse clear, consistent direction and a good routine full of creating good habits, your horse will begin to trust you as a leader and have confidence in what he should be doing and will actually begin to enjoy being a good horse for you. This is Clay Clemick and I hope you enjoyed this video and got something out of it. You can always reach out to me through Rising K Ranch.